First off, I'm going to show you how to create a data model. So we start by clicking on the New tab, then on Model. The grey bar on top shows me where I am and the steps I'll need to take. The Data section shows a catalogue of pre-built data connections available. If you can't see your data source here, don't worry. Zap Data Hub can connect to any data source, regardless of type or location. The Solution section contains the different types of business systems for which Zap Data Hub will automatically build a smart, configurable data model unique to your system. This makes it even quicker to access data for self service reporting and analysis. For this example, I will start with Microsoft Dynamics 365 for finance and operations. Once selected, this takes me to the Connect section, which is as technical as it gets. Here I need to choose the server that houses the system database for access via our data gateway. I simply enter the server details, my username and password, with the application client ID. Here I select the server that houses my D365 for finance and ops database. Now we test the connection. Wait a moment. Once this is complete and shows the green tick, then click Next. On the Configure Source section, I get a list of all the companies found in my D365 Finance and Ops system. I can easily select which companies I want to include in my model by selecting the tick box on the left. By default, they are all selected, and we'll keep them all selected for this example. Once the selection is made, click Next. Now we need to name our data model. In this case, we'll call it Enterprise Data Model. To save my data model, I click Browse, open a folder, in this case Public, Click onto New Folder and type in the name of the data model we just created, then click on OK. The Model Server field below shows me where my data warehouse and semantic layer will be saved. Zap Data Hub has generated recognizable modules for D365 Finance and Operations to enable easy navigation throughout the data model. I will now use Zap Data Hub's automation to create my data model. With just a click, Zap Data Hub transforms all relevant system tables into an easy to use, accurate, and secured hub of data with multiple layers of security that can be easily applied. No code, no time consuming technical processes. I can now access an isolated section of my data, which allows me to unify all the financial dimensions and organizational hierarchies of my ERP into one model. And with just a few more clicks, I can choose the start and end periods of my data model and what date formats I want for reporting. Below, I can create several types of calendars. You may need a fiscal calendar for financial and operational reporting, or you might have multiple companies with multiple financial calendars. For this example, we'll keep one of the fiscal calendars and remove the others. So, for multiple companies, we'll add in another fiscal calendar and call it Company 1, and another called Company 2. Now we have four calendars. Zap Data Hub makes complex calendar and data fields easy for self-service BI users. For example, I can set up financial periods, accounting timeframes, and working weeks to enable relative time analysis such as month-to-date and year-to-date with Excel, Power BI, Tableau, or other self-service BI tools. I can customize my working week and my fiscal period. There is assistance at every stage of the process thanks to the More Help feature which appears by hovering the mouse over the options like this. For my other company, we'll say their week starts on a Monday and their year starts April 4th. Then customize the week pattern to my use. My model will now adjust to the calendars I have created, making it easier to report on the most suited calendar for my business. With Zap Data Hub, I no longer need to worry about coding and table structures for self-service analysis. To activate and deploy my model, I click on Process Model and then click Process. I can now share this. To set permissions, I go to Roles, Open Application Users. Here I can set permissions right down to the individual user. By clicking Permissions, I can set the user access rights. For this user, I will allow them access to finance and sales. We can choose what tables they can access within those modules, or we can limit them right down to the most granular level. Here we can also control user access by their associated companies. To set permissions by company, we simply type in company and then on the left by opening the Resource Explorer. Go down to company and expand the list and drag across the ones we want. This will then only allow the users from the selected companies to access the data. I will now analyze my data model with Tableau. I'm going to open a data source connection and sign in. 
From here I click on the Enterprise Data Model that we have just built in Zap Data Hub, which will give me a preview of the different types of tables in my data model. I can now go into my sheet that I want to start reporting from. Within the Transform Dimensions, I'm going to select Company and drag it across to Rows. And now I will look for a particular analytic that I want to report from, in this case, the Sales Invoice Amount. Now I want to break this down by Customer, going over to Customer on the left and dragging that across to Rows. Zap Data Hub makes analysis with BI tools such as Tableau more efficient and effective. I can easily find the data I want to analyze and package the information into something that can be reused. I'll quickly show you what that looks like. Here's an example of a VP sales dashboard that's showing leads, opportunities, and sales. The data is immediately accessible without querying the D365 for finance and DOPS transactional database and impacting the application performance. Not only is the applicable security applied, but my analytical capabilities are expanded as I have full access to the information I need for easy ad hoc self-service interrogation. Now I'm going to show you how to integrate two data sources. Staying in my Enterprise Data Model folder, I'm going to click on Data Sources. You can see here that I'm still connected to D365 for Finance and Ops. Here's all the cryptic metadata from the D365 tables transformed into common language. I then close this tab, clicking on the X. And now I'm going to click on the Add Data Source button up here to add another data source to my model. The additional data source I want to connect to is Salesforce, so I click the Salesforce icon. Now I need to enter my login details. Press Test Connection and wait a moment for it to finish, indicated by the green tick. Then click Next. This is where I can select all the required tables I want to report on, in this case, Opportunity and Leads. Once selected, I click on Add Pipelines and wait a moment for it to process while Zap Data Hub accesses the data from both cloud environments and unifies them. Zap Data Hub's automation is now profiling all the data, adding the selected Salesforce tables to our model, establishing the primary keys, foreign keys, dimensions, and the values inherent in those tables. Another excellent feature of Zap Data Hub is the smart detection process. This identifies if there are any other tables within the selected data model that it can also relate to. The wizard tool automatically integrates the two data sources together to create a unified data model with zero manual effort. This will take a moment. The progress can be seen here to the right of the screen. Once complete, you can now click Finish. To make this live, click Process Model. As well as unifying data, Zap Data Hub allows me to set universal calculations in the data model to ensure consistency in reporting that improves trust in the information produced. Zap Data Hub models include a data warehouse and semantic layer of common business language. You can add calculations to either. First click on New, then onto Calculated Member. In this case, a pop-up will appear to allow me to choose which data model I want to add the calculated member to. Press OK. By opening the Resource Explorer by clicking here, it displays my Enterprise Data Model with dimensions listed in plain English. For this example, we'll create a calculation to show gross margin. To create my calculation, I'm going to click Measures to expand the options. Drag the Sales Invoice Line Amount over to the Formula bar. Click the Subtract button and drag over Cost of Sales. Then Format. Now I want to save this to my model by clicking on Save As and naming the calculation. In this case, Gross Margin. Then click Save and OK. To add this to the data model, I need to drag Customer Invoice Lines over here to make it part of that measure group. Now Save. Now when I click Refresh on the Dimension tree, I will see my gross margin calculation is now part of my customer invoice lines. Now if I close this down and go back into the model, the reporting calculations has changed from 383 to 384. By clicking on the expand arrow and typing in gross, you'll see I now have a unified gross margin calculation that is applied across both data sources that can be used for consistent reporting of that metric. The individual gross margin calculations from the different systems and modules within them can be removed. My data model now contains the unified and governed data of both systems and universal calculations. It's now ready for efficient, secure, self-service reporting and analysis in my business intelligence tool. In this example, we'll analyze the data model with Power BI. I've opened Power BI Desktop and clicked on Get Data. Our data model is housed in the SQL Server Analysis Services database, so I select that. Now I need to enter in my server details from before, then click OK. 
Once that loads and the Navigator window opens, I can click on my Enterprise data model I created earlier. Click OK. On the right, you can see I'm connected to my semantic layer. I will now show you how to create some content. First, I'll select Number of Customers, and I will open Contribution Margin, which is a pre-built calculation from the Zap Data Hub model. Select that like so, and the results will update here. Now I'm going to create a tree visualization to show what my customers look like by sales invoice amount. So from here I'm going to type sales invoice amount and select below. Then we want to break that down by my customers by selecting customer. You can see how Zap Data Hub makes finding data and creating content in Power BI a simpler process. I can easily create pre-built dashboards from ERP and CRM data, plus any other data sources I might want to add to the model. In this case, Zap Data Hub has enabled more efficient and effective reporting and analysis from Dynamics 365 for finance and operation data and Salesforce data. Fill in the form to book your demonstration today.